Hello everyone and welcome back to another video for the U tutorial series and in this video I want to look at the data grid and it's been a little while since I've posted a video but I was doing some work on the data grid the other day and thought it'd probably be worth looking at this. Now a data grid is one of those things where it kind of looks quite complicated when you first see it but once you start working through it and use it uh, a little bit it's fairly straightforward to use fairly straightforward to understand and so I'm gonna build an example up from our existing system which is this system we built for books and authors and stuff like that and just so that you know there is an article on the guide but it is not listed under widgets uh, in the guide which is at the bottom there is no link there but if you go under displaying data and look at data widgets there is a section here and one of those is grid view and this section here has kind of all the information that we want to look at so you can go there if you need any information about this most of what I have comes from that so let's look at this page so this is uh, the book controller this is the index action and what I've done is I've stripped out all of the customization that I had put into that grid view originally and this is kind of the vanilla look for a grid view. So if you have a quick look at the code, um, we've got a book model, which we've already seen. The book controller, we have create an active data provider. That's going to go away and get all of our information. Now, one thing that I noticed that I hadn't done, uh, which I probably should have done, is had this little join with author. Uh, and it kind of doesn't really matter for the demo. But what it means is when it calls this query, it's going to load the author table at the same time as the book table, which just saves sending multiple database queries. So that's just kind of good practice, but nothing really to do with the grid view particularly. And then by default, we render the index view and we set the data provider to the one we've just created, which is all as it was before. And then if we look in the view itself, we have this variable defined at the top which gives it a type for data provider and that's just to help in telesense uh, know what types are what and what's going to work and then the basic grid view is quite literally grid view colon colon widget and give it the data provider so that's all we need to get a really basic grid view up and like i say if we go back here and just reload that just to make sure this is what we get by default so it's pulled out all of the properties all of the attributes from book so it's got all of these in there and it's displayed them as best it can. Notice that as we looked at before, this is actually displaying here, can't select a column, displaying the author ID and not their name. So we've already fixed that before and we'll look at that again. But by default, it will just show the raw data in this model, which for ID is a number, obviously title, description, a text, author ID is a number. ISBN, interestingly, is not actually set. It's null in the database. So you get a nice little red not set and then a made up rank number like you get on Amazon for your books so you can see this is all there now one thing that's quite interesting that you might not realize is you actually get sorting automatically so if I click on these things it will actually sort my grid and it's kind of a bit magic really but effectively it uses this uh, parameters query string parameter called sort and it gives it a column name and what actually happens is deep under the covers in here when this active data provider gets run then it will see that there is a sort parameter on there and it will automatically sort it instead so that happens automatically we can look at how we might want to override that later but probably for most people that's going to work fine so the first thing we want to do is we're going to tailor our grid view. So we're going to kind of do uh, take it back a little bit to what it was like before I reset all of this stuff. So one of the things that you notice is that there is no columns property in here at the minute. And that's why we get the default. As soon as we put a columns property in, unsurprisingly, uh, let's oh, put the correct bracket in all of the default columns are going to disappear so if i kind of override that effectively what i'm saying is well maybe if it's blank oh yeah sorry let's put in another one so we're putting the first column in here and when we put this in control save then that's going to come up blank apart from the one column we've just added 
And so bear in mind that as soon as you put this in, start putting in columns, you're going to lose everything that was in there and you have to put it back in manually. So there's really two formats that we can use here for the columns. So serial column, uh, what happens here is in the collection, you've got different types of columns. They're mentioned in the guide here. You have a data column, which is bound to a database column. You have a serial column like this, which just counts up from one to however many are on your page. You have a checkbox column, which, as you might expect, puts checkboxes on there. You need to use JavaScript if you're using checkboxes, so I'm not going to go into that because that's probably a bit too complicated. And then the last one is an action column, and an action column is the one that has your kind of edit and delete buttons and stuff like that. So you've got a couple of different classes that you can use for the columns. Most of the time, you're going to use a data column, and a data column is the default. So if it is a data column, you don't have to specify that. And you've got two formats that you can use. So this here is actually the long format where you can define all of the different things like the label and all those kind of stuff as well. So in here by default, that label is a hash, but we could change that if we want. The shorter version is literally just a string like this. So if we put an ID and we refresh, we've now got the actual database ID for the book rather than a serial number. So actually, we might not really want a serial column, so we can kind of ditch that. And you can see more clearly, the short one just takes what's uh, takes the column called ID. It will get the display name from the model. So I'll get that from here. And uh, what is that book? Yeah, where has it got? Uh, oh, sorry, it's because ID doesn't have a label, so it's just got the default um, default name of ID. Uh, we could add things like title and description, which we can add in there. That should all work nicely. And if we refresh it again, we get all of the stuff back up. We've got rid of our serial column. And this time, title and description uh, hopefully do come from here. Uh, sorry, for attribute labels. So description is description. Title is title with a capital T. And there is the ID, which is capital ID. Sorry, I was looking in the rules, but should have been looking here. So the attribute labels are picked up automatically, and again, this all um, sorts like normal, which is all good fun. Um, so that's kind of fine, and you know, for a lot of cases, that's probably enough. The other thing that we might want to add in is this action column. Now, you get a lot of stuff for free in the action column. You can uh, override these things, but if you look in here, you'll now notice that you automatically get three icons. So that is view, that is edit, or sorry, update, and that is delete. And by using standard names for these things, then it means this will all work automatically. So even though I haven't configured this, it's gonna automatically look at the current controller, which is book, and it's gonna automatically give you the words delete, update, and view. And of course, we know from the existing stuff that these are the standard actions for the controllers. So just by using standard names and not trying to invent everything yourself, then we get all of that stuff that just wires up automatically. We can delete stuff, all the usual things. So the action column is quite cool. Right, so what else do we want to do? Well, one of the things that we want to do, oh, this one of them that I've missed at the minute is author ID. Now, what we know already is if I put in author underscore ID and go back here, I'm going to get a number, and I don't want a number, I want the author's name. And so, like I say, we've already seen this before, there's two formats. So the short format, again, allows you to cheat a bit, and what it basically allows you to do is to say, take that as the property name which is author.display name so if we look down here we have a relation called author author returns an author model and the author model has a display name so we can do that that will work automatically which is fantastic author.display name will resolve format it as text and use author as the column name as the label now that's already used author anyway because author is set as the label for that column but as you can see we automatically pull in the name of the author which is exactly what we want to do now there is a longer format which we can do as well so i'm um, again i've kind of showed you it in serial column but i'll show you it again 
So if we make the longer format, we then have to split these things out into their individual properties rather than putting them all in one place. So if we pull it out into a big class, we have to say that that's the attribute name, that's the format, and that's the label. So you can do it that way, and if you have to customize other things, then you will need to do that anyway. So you can use that format, you can use the short format that we just looked at. Um, that's kind of that, and if press F5, uh, that's obviously no different because that's exactly the same. The other one that we wanted to add here is rank. Again, we can probably leave that as the, oh, sorry, forgot to put the comma. Put that in there, we get rank, that's automatic again. Hopefully that will sort and that's all fine. So with minimum mil, minimal amount of effort, we've got a basic data grid, uh, sorry, a basic grid view. And you might kind of ask, well, you haven't really done anything because we already had that before. And that's right, but I wanted to do this in a kind of a, a way to build up from the kind of simple stuff to the more complicated stuff. And that's just so that you can see how straightforward this is. So, so far we've only really worked with two properties on the grid view, the data provider, which hasn't changed at all, and the columns. Now, one thing that you are gonna to want to do, apart from sorting, or you probably want to do in some cases, is what we call filtering. Now, what filtering is, is supposing I have author, and I want to say, well, I only want the books that were written by John Milton, then I want to filter this column. And when I filter, I get a little box up here and I can type in the author and I can press return and that will all work. So how do we do that? Well, one of the things that you might not be surprised to know is we have to code that filtering mechanism, but it's straightforward. A couple of things that you should note is when you're actually building your, uh, your system, when you do the CRUD generator, is it the CRUD generator? Yep. You can actually type in a search model class here, and when you do that, it will create you a search model class which you can customize. So that's what this is used for. It's used for filtering. But if we go back to our books and have a look, we're gonna make filtering come up, and we have to make um, do a number of steps first. So the first thing that we need is a search model. Now, ignore all the commented out stuff for now. Effectively, all I've done is I've created a new class. In this case, I've called it book search, call it whatever you like. And notice that it extends from the book active model. And it's a little bit of a cheat because a book search isn't really a book or a specialized version of a book. But the reason this is useful is it allows you to inherit all the properties of book or the attributes of it which just makes loading of the search query much easier. And we'll see that further down. So we have a class, we extend book. The only method we then need to implement is called search and it takes params. And these are basically the query string parameters. They're the things that come across the top here. And then all we do initially is we do exactly the same as we did before. We get a query where we start with the books and we also load the author table as well because we have a relationship and we want to see the author. So we might as well load all of that in one go. And then we assign that into an active data provider exactly as we did in the controllers, exactly the same as this. And the next thing we do, and this is kind of really the, the difference, is we say, if I can load the params that were passed in here into my model, in other words, into a book, and we know with book, that means if I can load uh, the title, description, author ID, ISBN, rank, all that kind of stuff, if I can load that, then it means that I've been given a search term and then I'm gonna go and do some filtering stuff. If that doesn't happen or if there are any validation errors, then all I do is I return the data provider, which is exactly the same as that data provider, which means it'll come up with a full list. So it's only if the parameters have loaded into the model and they validated that we can then go and do some kind of filtering. So that's kind of good enough. So for now, I'm not actually gonna do any filtering. I'm just gonna create this class, which I've done. That's already in there. So we have to do a couple of other things. We have to wire up this code in the controller slightly differently because at the minute, this thing isn't wired up anywhere, so it's not gonna do anything. 
So we do it slightly different. It's fairly straightforward. We create one of those and without kind of going into details, I've obviously included all the relevant um, files up there already. So you will have to make sure you do that. What I then do is rather than creating the data provider directly like I did before, I actually call the search function of book search. I'm going to call this and I'm going to pass it the get parameters. So they're the parameters that are across the top here in the URL bar. I'm going to pass them to the search function in here. And this is going to do whatever it wants to do with those and then return me a data provider that I then put into this variable here. I then let's go down to this bit and uncomment this. I then call the uh, oh, wrong one. I call the view again. The only difference this time is I also pass the search model into the view. So that's the kind of only difference with that part. And you can see the search thing is a bit different, but not, not too difficult. And then obviously an index I've um, added, or I'm going to add now this property here, uh, which I'm gonna put in here. And that property is basically uh, called filter model. It's a property of the grid view. And I'm gonna assign the search model that I passed in here into the widget. And it's going to use that so it's going to know what to filter and how to filter it. But because that's now set, assuming I've done everything correctly, which I think I have, if I now refresh this, I've now been given a couple of filter boxes. So there's a couple of important things to notice here. So numeric fields don't automatically get filters. We can give them filters, but they don't get them automatically. Text fields do get filters automatically and you can see that it's actually a text box you can type into and the other thing that's important to note at this stage is that author doesn't get a filter and the reason is this is not a property of book it's a property of author and although a book has an author we can't filter on that directly we can do it but we have to do some more work so let's try a couple of things so let's say right i want to find any books with the word paradise in if i now press enter the first thing that's going to happen is i'm going to get an error now the reason if we go back to here that i'm getting an error remember i've inherited book and because i've inherited book i've inherited all of the validation of book and when i try and load the query so you see up here i've got a query book search title equals that book search blah blah description is blank so it's taken those here loaded them and then performed validation and remember validation is going to run all of the rules that are here and that tells me that title and description are both required well of course when i'm creating a new book they are required but i'm not creating a new book i'm just trying to use it for searching so i have to do something here and the easiest way to get around this is to override the rules function with my own version for the search now, in this case, I've just copied and pasted the ones from book and I have commented it out that one. I could delete it, but I've commented out so you can see what I've got rid of. So I've said they are not required um, anymore for the search. It obviously doesn't change this, but for the search, they're, they're not required anymore. Some of these other things are probably not relevant, but I've left them in anyway. And let's ignore that last one for now because we haven't got there yet. So I've added some new rules. So let's go back and go here now. So let's just load this again. So we go in here, I'm gonna type paradise, press return. Okay, I don't get an error, but it doesn't work. So that's fine. So I've got rid of the validation problem. Why doesn't it work? Well, it doesn't work because I don't have any code to actually do the filtering. But do you know what? There's no point filtering if I'm just gonna filter down to one book. If I want to find one item out of what could be hundreds of thousands of results, then a filter box is not probably not really what I want. It would take far too long to work um, on a large data set. And most of the time you just have a search box somewhere and you type search with a few other parameters. So I don't really want title and description to be filtered, actually. Um, so I'm going to kind of ditch that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my view 
and I am going to say that my description and title, I now, now need to replace these with uh, a larger, the, the bigger version of, uh, of a column. So title is now going to be um, the attribute. It's called title. The label doesn't matter because that should come automatically. But the other thing is I'm going to say filter is false. Uh, okay, so that's title, blah, 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 blah. I need a col comma. So if I do that, hopefully, if I refresh that, my filter box is gone. So I say I don't want to filter on title. I don't want it on description either. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing here. Copy and paste that. Get that out of there. Put it in there and get rid of that little entry. And go here. And we don't have a filter here. So then the question is, well, how do I add a filter to the author? Because what's happening here is, by default, it's not going to let me filter on a related column. So a property from a related class. So what do I need to do? What I need to do is I need to make this a... Um, I've already got that anyway. Yep, so I've already got this as a an author and as a display name. So I've pulled out the right data. However, at the minute, this grid view has no way of knowing that that is actually a filterable attribute. Now, how do we make that become a filterable attribute? We kind of trick the system. So what happens now is we go to into our book search and we're gonna I'm gonna uncomment this. And what this is going to do is it's going to say when this view, when the grid view queries the object, I want it to return a property called author.displayName. So as well as all the properties that we've got here, um, all these all these guys, it's also going to have one that's going to call author.displayName. Now by doing that, we're going to trick the grid view into thinking that that is a filterable property. And I think if I open that up no nope. i need to do some more stuff i need to mark it as safe as well i think let's try that okay so i've added another rule to mark it safe for searching and that allows that basically says if you have no validator then i'm not going to display properly i'm not going to let you assign anything to it so if you don't have a validator for that field we could add one but i haven't if we don't have one we have to mark it as safe otherwise it won't it won't assign across into our search model. So I've added that in, I've added that in, and what that's done is the grid view now thinks that a book has an author.display name property, which it's happy to provide a filter for. Now again, if I try and use this, it's not gonna do anything. Why is it not gonna do anything? Because there's no code at the minute to actually wire it up. So how do we do that? It's pretty straightforward. You can probably work out most of it by yourself. So remember, we've got this search function in our book search. If we go down here, we'll say that basically if we get to this point here, then we have nothing to filter on. So we might as well just go home and give that data provider back in its raw form. But in this case, if we get past this bracket, it means that we do have something to filter on because we've loaded up a load of stuff and we validated. Now, remember, if we look back here, we have told the grid view that that column is called author.displayName. Now that means that when this gets loaded up here, our new attribute author.displayName is going to have the value that we type in to that assigned into it. What do we do with that? We modify the query. Now, one of the things that's a bit confusing here in my example is display name is not actually a database property. So I don't know if you remember, but display name I created by sticking the first name and the surname together with a space. Uh, and I can't work out easily without having to do something quite complicated about how to do this in one go. So what I've done, because remember, this is a, a SQL query. This is not a, an active record. It's actually a, a data query for active record. So I can't use names in here that don't exist in the database. So what I've done is I've added two where clauses. So what this will end up looking like is load all of the books with their authors where the author.surname is like the name that you've typed in or the first name is like the name that you typed in. 
so it will look in either field that still kind of works it still does what i want to do if you type uh, john milton then probably it won't work because neither of the the fields will look like john milton but it kind of does what we need to do for now if you're using a field like if you were just searching on surname and you maybe you listed the surname and the first name separately then that would all work fine but because i've mixed them up on the on the grid here and joined them together that makes our search a little bit more messy but that's all we have to do so all we've done is we've applied some filters on the end if you have more than one filter all you do is you just add the relevant things all on the end you just got to try and work out what you want to do but here's the trick this filter word is important because what the filter will do is it will ignore anything that comes back with an empty result set so if you think about here if you typed in let's say you had box there and a box there and a box there and you typed something like hello and that those two were blank then when you try to search obviously if you try to say where description equals blank you're not going to get any results so normally in a sql query that would end up uh, bringing you back no, no results what you're kind of saying is well i only want the stuff where the title matches i want you to ignore description and author because they're blank and that's exactly what these filter clauses do there's an and filter where as well so you could say um you've got to be a little bit careful with your logic obviously but you could say and oh, great that worked really well uh, I'm not sure why it didn't find it, but you could, um, it might be because it's a, I've put it in the wrong order, but you can use and filter where you can use others. And what the filter will do is the filter is basically saying, if this value here is null or blank, then ignore the whole line. So don't apply it to the where clause so that it doesn't give you back an empty result set. So when you're doing the filters, you want to use the filters and not the normal active query where clauses. So that's really important. Otherwise, it probably won't work and you'll get back nothing and you won't understand why. So we've added a couple here. I've added if the author surname or first name matches the author display name, which remember we got from here, um, then return the results and again we can see if this works by typing in something here pressing return and as you can see works easy peasy so we type in uh, milton obviously it's the same if we make it blank again because these are all blank then it returns back everything it doesn't return back nothing but notice if i type this i don't think it'll work okay and that's because of the way i've had to implement this is I'm looking for the whole phrase in the surname or the first name and that whole phrase doesn't appear because I've got I've used both names here so that's not perfect I should really fix that and do something proper but that's basically how that works uh, and the other thing I wanted to talk about when I first did this I don't think I had sorting on my grid and I was trying to work out how to do sorting it looks like it kind of works automatically like I say when you click on that it adds this sort parameter to um, to the query. And in this case, I think if I actually do something like that, it's still, I can still reorder it because it keeps all of the query information in the string. So all of it's run every time. Now that works automatically, but obviously you can intercept it if you want. So what I did initially was this was one of the things I did when I didn't realize it was already sorting. So I basically said in my search, in my book search, I could say if sort is in the params that have come back, then just call order by. So that works, but um, looks like I don't need that. So that's probably a waste of time. So let's get rid of that. Um, and then the other thing is in here, another way you could do it um, exactly the same, just at a higher level not sure which one's better but again you could say if request get sort is not equal to null then uh, basically order by the value of that sort parameter um, now in actual fact this code wouldn't work very well because what happens is when you keep clicking it then you'll notice here it actually has a minus rank and if you click it again that'll go to plus rank so that it can actually sort in both directions so my code won't even really work properly so you might as well ignore that but you can intercept that if you want so that's mostly all you need to know about the basic grid view 
Uh, you can see that it's it's pretty straightforward. The stuff's pretty straightforward. You can see the columns. You've either got the short syntax or the longer syntax. And there's loads of other things you can add here. You can see like label and various other properties as well. You've got an action column, which by default, if you don't change all of the, the names of the actions, will just work. If you need to change those, there's a property in action column, which allows you to set both the template and the graphics for these, and also override the controller and the action names for those buttons. So you can override all of that, just like you can normally in Yi. There are a whole load of HTML options, which allow you to customize all kinds of stuff and kind of, you know, make it look like you want to make it look like. That's all fairly standard Yi stuff. Um, and then we looked at the searching and the filter uh, filtering. So you can see here that basically by extending the active record, you can then override the rules if you need to. So you almost certainly need to get rid of the required fields if you're going to do searching. You could try and uh, pulling the parent rules and add stuff to it. Whichever way works is fine because you can see here I've just used array merge. But in this case, I need to override some. So it was easier just to copy and paste it in. And then you saw that even with relations, if I add a pseudo property here, a pretend property to my class, to my um, active record class, then what happens is the grid view then is happy to provide a filter box for it. I just then need to wire it up and make it behave in the right way. So hopefully that's kind of explained all the stuff. The only thing I want to leave you with is uh, something that I found uh, the other day, which is fantastic. Now, this is one of um, the guy's names, Kartik. So Kartik's written loads of controls for Yi. And one of the ones that they've got is, but this is basically their super duper grid view. So they call it U2 Grid. It's an extension. It's open source. And as you can see, it adds all kinds of functionality to the basic grid view. So you've got all sorts of stuff. You've got hyperlinks. You've got color choosers. You've got drop downs for your filters. You know, all kinds of stuff. You can group columns and merge columns together. Have a, a, a title that goes across three columns. You've got all these action buttons at the top, like export to file and all kinds of stuff. So if you're going to do anything serious with the grid view, I really recommend using this one. I've used it already on another site. I haven't done lots with it. But basically, it works really, really well, and um, it probably adds a lot of stuff to the grid view, which maybe one day will be pulled into the main view, uh, into the main grid view in Yi. So that's just um, Kraji.com. There is a GitHub site uh, for this, and it will probably be, I don't know, well, one of these maybe. Oh, it looks like it is a GitHub it is actually a GitHub site, I think. So anyway, there's tons of documentation in there. Just search for, um, if you search for a Kartik grid view, I think you'll find it fairly easily. Top hit and find it on GitHub. Or you can find it on the actual website itself. So really recommend it. It's an extension. It extends the grid view, the normal grid view. So it works in mostly the same way. It just gives you a load more properties, a load more column types and stuff like that. So... Hopefully that's explained enough about the grid view. Like I say, always start in the guide because most of the stuff you want to know is probably already talked about in there. But otherwise, any comments or questions about the grid view, please put them below. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video.